Hello everyone, this is W.A.K. William, host of this very special event, Trash Can Sinatra's newscast number three. In today's episode, I spoke with Robert, and we shared our love for this historical album, I've Seen Everything. We discussed lyrics, songs we love, why it has made an impact, and other good topics. Pull up a chair, grab a good drink, sit back and relax, and enjoy our discussion on an album that we both truly, truly love. Doesn't get much better than that. Hello, everyone. This is W.A.K. William, host of the TCS newscast number three. Before we begin, that was Orange Fell. Of course, off the album, I've Seen Everything. I wanted to read something to you from our little bookie here that some of you may be familiar with, The Perfect Reminder. And then I'm going to bring in our very special guest. We're going to have about a 30-minute conversation regarding our feelings about this seminal album that came out in May of 1993. So feel free to ask us any questions, put your comments in the comment box, anything you want to share regarding your sentiments uh, for any of the songs, uh, concert experiences, merch, anything you want. So before I bring in Robert Love, I'm going to read something to you. If you have the book, you may turn to page 166, and I'm going to read just a short paragraph here. This is written by Joe DeMaria, um, and he writes, it was impossible to find out anything about them. I'd go to a record store to find, try to find cake, and of course, I couldn't. There was just never anything there at all. Fast forward a year or so, maybe to late 93, I was watching Beavis and Butthead. I can still remember the episode, True Crime, and I can still picture the apartment I was in, where the TV was, where I was. And this video comes on, I'm like, oh man, I really like this guy's voice. Oh man, I really love this music. Who is this? And then it gets to the end and it says, Trash Can Sinatra's Hay Fever. I jumped up. Trash Can Sinatra's have a new album out? Really? Oh wow. It had been that long without hearing about them. I figured they were done. They ceased to exist. But no. All right, so that was Joe's introduction to this album and uh before i share mine i'm going to bring in a special guest hello robert love thank you for joining us for this newscast hello sir how are you i'm very well thank you so you just heard a a, a retelling if you will from joe and the from the book perfect reminder uh regarding um this album i've seen everything can you tell us about your ex first experience with this album? So it was it was when it came out and it was it was May um, and it was 30 years ago. And uh, I, I had more hair then. Uh, I was a younger guy and I was starting out as a as a cub reporter in a small newspaper in the northwest of Ireland. And um, we didn't have many readers. Um, and nobody paid much attention to us, but we, we did have a music column and we were allowed to go to gigs and to write album reviews and to write to record companies and beg for, for, for free CDs and free records. And I got a bunch from, uh, from, from Go Discs and uh, I still remember when I put on uh, that album. And like, like, like your friend who you read about there, uh, I just went, who is this band? This is incredible. 
And, uh, you know, 30 years have passed. I go back to that album again and again and again. And I guess, you know, I often wonder, I often wonder exactly why that is because, you know, uh, I have a lot of, I have a lot of albums. I'm a big fan of music. I go to, I go to gigs all the time. I have done for 30 years, but there is something about that record that is just truly extraordinary. Okay. And we're going to get a little deeper into what makes this album so extraordinary, why it's so beloved by so many music fans, particularly trash can Sinatra fans. Um, so in 1993, um, I can remember for me, I remember when the album came out and I enjoyed it. I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, and be artificial about it. I did enjoy it, but it wasn't until for whatever reason, the movie Scent of a Woman came out and I'd gone to see it with a girlfriend at the time. And we had this amazing discussion about it. And I remember on the ride home, we had the album on. And for some reason, it just, everything just clicked. It all made sense. Why at that moment, who knows, who really cares? But I remember during that summer, I listened to that album nonstop, nonstop. And when I went to college, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, the, uh, when the internet first came about and you can find lyrics to the songs, so on and so forth, um, we had to do in our, one of our communications class, we had to uh, bring a song to the classroom that was special to us. So I recommended for everyone at that time, I'm Immortal. And so people, there were a few people that kind of grabbed onto that song, the band, so on and so forth. But anyways, that was kind of my first ex real falling in love with this album. Okay, so I want to ask you this, Robert. So as time has gone by and this album has aged beautifully and it sounds gorgeous, on our lovely vinyl here. Tell us some things. What are some aspects to this album that you really appreciate to this day? I'm not surprised that... So it, it did impact me massively the minute I heard it, which, you know, it was a slower burn for you, but then it it, it arrived in a, in, a, in a bolt, you know? Um, like, if you go back to what my interests in music were at the time, you know... Mm -hmm. I like a very broad taste in music. Uh, I liked everything. I used to say I liked everything from, even before Rick Rubin got involved, I liked everything from Johnny Cash to Slayer, which Rick Rubin was also involved in, a uh, good Californian band. So I had, I had quite hard-edged tastes, and I was very excited by, you know, the Nirvana, the Seattle experience, uh, bands from New York like Helmet. I was into all that music, and I went to see those shows. But, you know, the, the beauty of music is that, you know, you can listen to you can listen to that stuff one day, but, you know, you can hear something that's completely different and it just it just blows your way. And 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 that that album, I think it, it's it's definitely romance is all through it. Romance is through it in all the songs. And, you know, if you I was a young guy at that stage, you know, and maybe I was I was I was loving and losing in a way that uh, that marks you for 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 the rest of your life going forward. Not in any in any negative way, but just in a way that it it forms you. It puts the it puts the knots in your tree trunk. It put, you know, it just it fashions you and, and it affects the way that you look at things. And when I listen to that album, I just get a sense of people in a time, in a place. I can, it's not, it's, they do describe the actual environment that they were in. Some of it is very specific, North Kilburn, you know, like or Orange Fell. Uh, but, but it's also an emotional place. Like it, it really is. And, and, and I'm immortal, like, you know, I believe that when he was singing at that point in time, he felt immortal. And when I was younger, sometimes I felt like I was immortal, less so as I got older. So I think I think it's it's a it's a combination of 
of the actual beauty of the music and the arrangements and and so on the the power of the of the pictures that the lyrics paint for they're not precise you know the lyrics i have tried to work out the lyrics and you know i'm not really sure you can but they definitely paint pictures for you and isn't that the beauty of poetry and the beauty of short stories and the beauty of paintings all art is about is about making you think and and doing that in a way that's that's powerful in terms of your emotions and i think this this album it, it nails it to a degree that many other albums fail to do i think you i think you articulated that beautifully um in my last conversation with matt we spoke about the album cake and we talked about the witty wordplay from frank and this album, I'm going to read some lyrics here from I'm Immortal. Um, you touched on it succinctly where it creates this um, snapshot in your head and uh, this imagery. And I'm going to read some lyrics here. This is from I'm Immortal. And I remember these are, this was the song I shared with my classmates in that college class. So out for a spell, got neglected, lay lay on the bench, <clears throat> unselected, laughing. I joined in the squabbles over the hill. I'm immortal. I'm immortal. I'm immortal. No life at all. I'm immortal. And that's no life at all. Matt said this beautifully um, a, two weeks ago. Not only do you have these amazing lyrics, but it's the way that Frank is able to um, clearly vocalize and enunciate his passion, his sadness, melancholy, his frustration, his glee, all that stuff. And that's kind of an art that I feel like people don't give a lot of attention to. His, uh, the melodies, the vocal melodies that they're able, he's able to come up with, amazing. And I feel as though this album is very diversified in that manner. Um, when this album came out, they came to the Bay Area, 93, our local station here, Live 105. Um, they, I think they were hosting this event, an amazing club called Bimbo's. <laughs> this place, I've said this on this page many times. When TCS arrived that, that day, the buzz and the energy was insane. They get on stage that place was rocking before they even entered. I mean, they, they, people were just going nuts. And when they got on stage, I think they played for an hour, 20, hour and 30 minutes, maybe. Oh man, it was electric. And it was one of the few concerts, like at that time, I was like, there's something really magical about this. So I wanna ask you about, have you experienced a TCS concert? You know, I'm I'm going through my bucket list, and I have not experienced a Trash Can Sinatra's concert. concert. And uh, yeah, that's um, and I, and I've I've there's some bands I've been re really into, and 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 albums, and I, I've had you know I've had good experiences, and I've had bad experiences chasing that particular uh, that particular dream. Like time passes, and you know. I'm not the guy I was when I started listening to that. And sometimes they're not the guys or the gals that they were when they made yeah. it. So listen, I, their music is, it, it's, it shimmers and it, it's, it's transcendental. And it's it, like, I can imagine that it's something that's remarkable in the live setting. Like it's purely, it's truly remarkable in the recorded uh, setting. So it, you know, add the emotion of the guys being there and interpreting it with nuance. And I, I can't see how you couldn't win, but um, yeah, I'm going to, I've been looking out for them in Ireland, but I haven't, I haven't, they just, it just hasn't, I haven't seen the shows, you know? So uh, yeah. One for me in the future. I think without spoiling anything, because there's such a, an affinity and reverence for this band over time, what I've noticed within the shows, <clears throat> people are now, th this is only the San Francisco shows that I've seen. I can't, I can't speak for others. People are now after songs. It's not just like this. It's like this thunderous applause. 
because what we know, this is so damn special. And this ain't going to last forever, like so many of our bands that we love. And they are on top of their game, top of their craft. They're more engaging with the audience. They love talking to the audience, sharing stories. So it's a really nice mutual exchange of like musical friendship, if you will. So hopefully you'll get to experience that um, and, you know, post, <laughs> send some pictures along or anything. Like that. I'll, def I'll okay. definitely do it. It's, it's 30 years. And I guess if you, you know, I know them, I'm sure there are people who come to the band, like you said it at the outset, you know, their sound is remarkably fresh if you listen yes. to it now. You know, you could release those songs and 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 they could be hits, you know. Um, yeah. but I guess for people who who've been on the journey, you know, I always think that's special. You know, you're they don't know you, but 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 you know, you're on a shared path together and it's been 30 years. I love that you're on a shared path together. And when I kind of opened this page up and I thought I knew quite a bit about this band. I don't know shit compared to a lot of these people. <laughs> and if Keith and Mark, you're listening, <laughs> uh, it's amazing. I mean, it's truly astonishing the history that people have for this band and really respect it. Now, I want to ask you this question. Uh, before we went live, you told me, man, it was hard to pick two or three favorite songs. So let's talk about some songs that really have had an impact with you. Go ahead. Tell us two or three of your favorites here. So I've never been asked to pick my favorite songs uh, on a record like that before. So, you know, so I drove to work this morning. Uh, luckily, the traffic's quieter in Ireland in the summer. The kids aren't at school and uh, you can get through. You can get through our ring road around Dublin a bit quicker. It can be torturous. But so I had the album on and I, I listened to it and I was 12 songs in. And I was going, this is this is just impossible. <laughs> how, how can I, how can I put one above the other? So, yeah. you know, you, I'm going to pick songs because maybe not because, because I can't choose between some that I love equally. You know, it's like your children, you know, you can't say I like one child more than the other. You like them both, but they have different uh, nuances. So I'm going to probably come a bit left field with my first one. And that's one at a time. Okay. And why why have I picked that? You know, I kind of picked that because it's brilliance that maybe you don't often associate with the band. It's a real guitar driven song. Like if you listen to that song, that guitar, it's it's hauling the lyrics along. It's hauling it along. And it's like mm -hmm. it's like a mountain stream in flood. Like it's it's rushing downhill. It's stopping, it's going around and round and around in circles, and it's rushing off again. It's it's like a torrent. And you know, the lyrics are are almost as they're almost like a I don't know if they're they're, they're hardly aggressive, but it's kind of like a stream of imprecise statements that are being pushed out there as this guitar crashes through and lulls and builds and falls. And and it made me think, man, this this is a great guitar band. They're a guitar band and they're a great guitar band. And I think that maybe people might associate their music with a, with a more mellow and a more milder and a much more nuanced thing. Yeah, their music is brilliant in that. Like it has very few peers when it comes to that, 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 that softness and that melancholy and that ev evocation of a place and a time. But when they, when they get those guitars going and they go after it, they're brilliant. So it, it deserves it. I don't know what you think of that. Three. Boom. It's, it's boom. Like it is boom, you know, it, and, and that's a song I'd like to hear live. I have to say. That would be amazing. It, it's uh, I'm glad you picked that one. Um, it's just kind of all systems go. We're going to press on these pedals and we're just going to create this amazing cascading sound of, of noise here. Um, I'm how glad do you I'm write that? I how don't do know. I like that guitar music. Like, how do you how do you say 
I'm going to start here. Yeah. I'm going to end here. Like it's, it's like you've gone from like the, the top of the Rocky mountains to the lowest part of America. And you've done it in the, in the course of three or three and a half minutes. It's just, and you've, rip the guitar apart you've you've yeah. been soft you've been crashing you've been reverb it's just it's a piece of work you know and you know i pick it because uh if all those songs are my children it's the it's the rowdy loud yep, yep. compelling you know deep dark one you know um all right uh i'm gonna share my one of my favorite tracks and that is what I just announced earlier. So slick, so smooth. Um, and I, I, as I just mentioned, why I used I picked that song for my classroom experience with the with the students and this and that. Um, that's a song for me that it was just like instantly. I'm like, okay, I'm going to listen to this one over and over again. Um, that was, that was, that was a no brainer slam dunk. Um, and I love it. And this is no criticism to the band whatsoever. Cause I don't play music. I love its simplicity and I love its build and climbing up that, that ladder of, of sound. So that's one of my favorites. Uh, let's hear another one from you. I just got to endorse that one. I'm Immortal is just incredible. And that crescendo that it reaches, no life at all. And as yeah. you said, the phrasing is, I didn't think of it before, but it's very precise, the phrasing and the way that he enunciates the words in that. So, yeah, that's a, that's, I, I, I'm, I hope that they should have got down and worshipped at your feet when you played that song. To them, <laughs> it's, a, it's an absolute cracker. My, my other is. one is, my other one is Orange Fell, and okay. um, I guess I don't quite know why that song is so is so impactful for me. Um, and that's not to say that I can't put my finger exactly on on what's good about it. I can, but but it, it impacts me in a way that I I think is more than maybe some of the other songs that are more immediate or more relatable or or more, more straight songs, if you know what I mean. It's it's quite yes. a, it's quite a gloriously lush soundscape, and it's very delicate, but but it's quite imprecise, really, in in the way that it's structured. Um, you know, uh, anything that's got a line that all our love was made on sheets left unmade. You know, like that's yeah. I just went, oh yeah, that's 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 good. That's good because that's that's the best way. That's the best. That's the best way, you know. Um, I think it's a, it's a time and a place. A lot of a lot of that album is a time and a place, and they're all different times and places. But it's a very imprecise time and a place. It's more an emotional time and a place. Whereas you know there are other songs that are about time and place, and you can you can almost paint the picture of of that, or at least I do in my mind, and I kind of paint the picture of why the band where uh talking you know why they chose that to talk about it but yeah it's it's just atmospheric beyond belief and uh you know you, i think you let in with it at the start and uh yeah it finishes if, on my vinyl copy i think it finishes side one you know and uh i sometimes just go sit there and go yeah that is yeah. just something else it's something else have you had the pl and great pick, by the way? Have you had the experience of listening to this album with headphones? I have, I have. Um, not not as much as I'd like to. Um, yeah. I, I, it's is it an is it an, an extraordinary experience to listen to it in headphones? I think so. Yeah, I think you um, particularly with this uh, this reissue. Um, I've been able to pick up just little nuances, um, little accented parts that I didn't hear before. Um, yeah. But, yeah. and you, and when you can sit back in a chair for, you know, 45 minutes to an hour and just in tune out the world, um, 
And, and you know, and you can sit down with the lyrics and listen to read people's stories. It, it just all kind of springs to life. Um, so yeah, it is a really, if you can get that time to yourself, I highly recommend it. I, I, I um, have a, I have a, I have a, I have a good sound system. Uh, I've, I've, <laughs> I've put a lot of my hard earned cash into it. And, uh, I have a very, very accommodating wife who allows me to shut the doors in a room at the back of the house, crank that baby up and sit back. And I enjoy nothing more than, you know, playing it loud. And you're right. There's, there's so much like there's a there's a craft to the songs, but there's a craft to the production on the record yeah. as well. And, and and I think that's one of the things that gives it that timeless quality. Uh, their music is not, you know, they weren't trying to do grunge. You know, they weren't trying to do um, power pop. They weren't trying to do, you know, to copy another band. They were they were doing their own individual, nuanced, unique thing but they were doing a 10 out of 10 in terms of quality, the songwriting, the instrumentation, the guitar playing. And that was like, I, I, I'm not educated enough to, to know. I, I've read the name of the guy that produced it, but it's a masterpiece the way that it's produced. It had to be, it had to yeah. be because the songs are so atmospheric that they just have to be brightly, brightly cut and polished diamonds. Give us your, if you have one, your uh, third and final track. My third and final track is Early's. And the reason is it's the most relatable song on the album for me. Like it's the one that I can, it's the one that I can most say, I think I've been where those guys have been. Geographically, uh, at the time, they, like, if Orange Crush is about a time and a place, but it's imprecise and you have to interpret it, I think Early's is about a time and a place and they tell you exactly where it is. Like, it's London, it's 1981, it's North Kilburn, it's Cake Brick Road, it's, 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 it's in London at a time, I'm an Irish guy, when there was a lot of bombings going on in London, um, they mention it. Um, and I was in London, not in 1981. I was in London in 1987, which is not that long afterwards. And I think Early's is, for me, I could be completely wrong. And I know that there's a, there's a record that could display my, uh, my misinterpretation of the song. But that's good because whatever it is for me is, I'm sure, fine with the guys in the band. But, but Early's is a phrase in the UK and in Ireland for going to the pub and having a beer early or a drink early though that's called early's and when i was a young guy working in my first job in 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 london that i had to go to london there were no jobs in ireland at that stage now we've got a roaring economy and we have loads of people coming in to take jobs and it's great but back then in the town that i grew up and this is before i got my job in the newspaper and got the trash can sinatra for free which is a bit of a i have to admit like i'm the guy who didn't buy my first record like i got it for free so i'm probably not as i'm not as pure a fan as some you know but but before that all that i was in london and you know i used to work like five days on you know two days off and sometimes seven days on and and have three days off and I went to the pubs in London. I went to the earlies and I, I met some of the guys that, you know, straight, you know, if you go to a pub early in the afternoon, you meet different people like and they have time on their hands. That's why they're in there and they're they're interesting. And it just uh, yeah, it's really interesting for me. I wasn't in North Kilburn. I was in East London in East Ham. The pub that I went okay. to was the Prince of Denmark. And I met a guy from Glasgow in there who told me he'd been a mercenary in Rhodesia. And he showed me a bullet hole in his side, which he got when he was there. Like, what's not to like about going to the pub and meeting a guy like that and hearing a story like that? It's just incredible. So I guess I think of Early's. I think of maybe this is the band. They're in London. They're either, you know, maybe they're not in, in, as a band in London. Maybe they're in London as individuals. But they're, they're young guys and they're experiencing that first kind of experience of a big city having come from a relatively small place like I did. And I, I can relate to that. And it's a cracking song. It's beautifully arranged. Let's take a quick listen.
See, I just got goosebumps. <laughs> yeah, walking home from work in for so, a narrative. So here, do you want to know a little bit of the song? <laughs> How far wrong was I? Yeah. So uh, everyone, if you have your book, go to page 270. See, I'm a teacher. I was an educator for many years, so that's why I'm talking about <laughs> um, I think I'm going to get a D. So early is the story of endings, the ending of a shift at work, the ending of a friendship, the end of a chapter in life. It's the story of night shift workers and early starters crossing over and sharing a meal reflected in the gentle late night, early morning dawn feel of the recording. Early's is hazy, shady London set to a gloriously shimmering, shimmering soundtrack of delicately, elegantly guitars. The whole band playing out the album in restrained confidence. Restrained confidence. Um, so, okay. I'm glad you picked that because that is my blue ribbon number one track. <laughs> and it didn't used to be. It was one of those songs, I, again, kind of like what I said at the very beginning. I really enjoyed this album. I really enjoyed that song. This song, I don't even, it must, I don't even know, six, 10 years ago, it just became my numero uno. Now, why? Well, you captured it beautifully in your and in, in eloquently in your words, but to me, it's just it's 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 one of those closing tracks to an album. It bookends it beautifully. You've gone through this emotional ride, this journey with this with these songs, and John singing. When you hear him and see him play this song live it takes even on a greater meaning and appreciation. And it's the delicate, like I said in the book, delicate strumming, beautiful vocals, um, the, 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 the lyrics, all these things amalgamating and, and coming together. It's so fucking romantic to me. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just one of those songs that has really captured my heart. And there's a woman who was in a band called Trespassers William. She does this um, great rendition of this song. Her name is Lottie Kastner. You can find it on YouTube anywhere. She does a beautiful, remarkable version of this song. And uh, not easy to do by any stretch of the imagination. But to me, this this. Um, it's it's it is my number one song from this album. It, it's a very restraint like that is that's making me think that is that is part of its power is that it is it is so impactful yet it's done at a pitch that's very restrained at, or and and I guess that's what catch it that's what drills into you you're going this thing is so powerful but. Yeah. It's not it's not because they're screaming or it's not the torrented guitars of the first song that I mentioned. It's and it's it's just it's beautiful. Like and yeah, it it's a time and a place. So my interpretation was off, but it was still about people meeting, coming and yeah. going, and and interactions and 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 yeah, the end of things. Like that's like when I think of my life and I think of when I was in London, that was it. I never went back. I never lived in that city again. I have all those memories of the people I met, the things I did and so on. But it, it was a bookend to that part of my life. And I went on to another part of my life. And uh, yeah, I think that's so many of those songs are are about, they, 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 they channel experiences that you've had in ways that you're not quite sure. And that's why you keep listening to it. Because if you were quite sure, you know, it might become less compelling to listen to it every time. But beautiful that, that's right and may i also say that when you speak with other trash can sinatra's fans about these songs or from you know weightlifting happy pocket whatever album it may be um there is a real kinship 
amongst this community. There's a there's a there's an amazing solidarity regarding these albums, regarding these songs, regarding these moments in time. And when people speak about these songs, you you feel the glow. And I I, I know that sounds cheesy, but you 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 feel the spirit and this energy. And um, I think this is what one of the reasons why this album continues to really be embraced by people that are just discovering this album, people that have loved this album for many years. Um, so any final words before we uh, close this conversation? I just like, I'd like to thank you for giving me an opportunity to think about the album more. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I do think about it when I listen to it, uh, but, but in a way it's like, it's like climbing into a bed with silk sheets, you know, it's just yeah. so comfortable to listen to. And, you know, it never gets old. It never gets old. And, you know, how, you know, how do you make something that somebody's listened to? I don't know many times I've listened to it. You know, 300, maybe, you know, it's 30 years. Like I, I definitely listened to it a lot and I never got tired of it. So, you know, I look forward to, maybe going to see them and um, and meeting people who who love them as much as I do. And, you know, that's a, I think you're right. It's kind of a, it's a special thing because like I know and the other fan knows just how good they are. And so many people don't know. <laughs> and it's nice to be in the know. That is absolutely precise. And they still... I mean, they have such an, an allegiance, right? There's a, there's a very muscular loyalty to this band. But they still, in my opinion, have not crossed over to that next big pond. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to know. It's always, it's always nice to have a secret. And uh, I suppose the last thing I'd say is that, you know, I wrote my review in that little newspaper in the, in the, in the Northwest of Ireland. And cause I'm a good guy and I, and, and I knew that, you know, I need to show go discs that I actually reviewed the album. So I put the, the review in, in, in an envelope and I posted it over to wherever it was that the record company were based. And I got a postcard back from the band, thanking me for taking the time and thanking me for giving them a good review. And, uh, as you know, I went searching for that postcard. Mm -hmm. Couldn't I'm find a bit it. Sick that I can't find it. I'm very sick that I can't find it. But before we draw the curtains on this conversation, you have something that you showed me yesterday in our conversation. Oh, yeah. So I have the sticker says G O D X 98, four track 12 inch. And inside. <laughs> I actually have the free print. There so, it is. So I, I was hoping the postcard would be in here as well, but it's not to be found. So but maybe someday in 30 years, I'll find if I'm around in 30 years, I'll find the postcard. I'll still be listening to the trash can Sinatras and I'll still <laughs> be listening to that album. I'm pretty sure. Robert Love, this has been a great pleasure to host this event with you. Uh, TCS newscast number three. Um, thank you for sharing your insight, your interpretations, your love for this album and uh, spread the good word. And I know when TCS starts touring, whenever that may be, um, and you can get to one of their shows, I know we're going to have another great conversation. Um, so thank you so much, everyone. My name is W, host of this event. Um, I want to let you know that on August 13th, my co-pilots, Mark and Keith, we are going to take a really deep dive into all of these albums, TCS albums. We're going to talk about concert experiences, merchandise, lyrics, uh, favorite tracks, so on and so forth. And we will have a few guest surprises on uh, for that event as well that will join us in that conversation. Who are those surprises? Well, that's why we call it a surprise. So you're, I'll give you more details as we get closer to that date. Um, in the meantime, go listen to some I've Seen Everything. Put comments in the box. We want to hear from you and uh, share us your 
your feelings. Take care, everyone. We'll see you for TCS newscast number four coming up in about a week and a half. Robert Love, thank you so much. My name is W. Take care. Ciao.